Okay, so let's solve our first example. Um, the question is asking us that assume VA is infinity, meaning that no early effect. Um, IC is 1 milliamp, VCC is 1.8 volts, and RC is 1 kilo. Um, we have a common emitter amplifier, right? So basically we're talking about a circuit that looks like this. Okay, so we have a V in here, this is RC, this is VCC, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And then IC, the DC current flowing through the collector is 1 milliamp. The question is asking us to find, the first part is asking us to find the expression for the voltage gain. Well, the expression for the voltage gain is actually quite simple. So um, it's the same circuit that we have seen before, so there's no reason for us to actually redo the analysis, right? I know that uh, for this circuit, I know that V out over V in is equal to negative GM RC. All I need to do if I want to calculate the value of this, it's going to be well calculating negative GM, GM being IC over VT. So it's negative IC over VT times RC. So it's going to be negative 1 milliamp over let's say 25 millivolts and uh, RC is one kilo. So one milliamp and one kilo, they cancel out each other, milli and kilo, and one over 25 millivolts is gonna give you 40. So your gain is gonna be negative 40. Um, and since this is voltage gain, so it's gonna be volts over volts. Okay, so that's the unit for voltage gain. Um, one thing I want you guys to actually note is that for electronic circuits, especially from now on, that we are talking about transistor circuits, when it comes to small signal analysis, you will realize that we always deal with the same core for the circuit, and then may, we might actually have little variations here and there. So unlike electrical circuits, where we actually had to do any variations in the circuit, we actually had to start over and write the KCLs and KVLs again, here, we barely do write any KCLs and KVLs, and you will see many, many examples from now on, and you will see how I solve these circuits. I always try to see what I know about the circuit. For example, uh, in the last part of this question, I'm going to add a resistor here, okay? And you will see that I don't start reanalyzing re or basically restarting the analysis of the circuit again from KCLs and KVLs. I try to update my equations for the gain, with basically little tricks here and there so that I don't like so that I can actually be lazy I don't have to actually re redo everything okay and that's the beauty of electronics it's built for lazy people so like basically if you actually like to uh, not to write KCLs and KVLs all the time this is actually really good news for you because if you learn what's the gain of a common emitter amplifier it doesn't matter if I have connected one resistor here or a bunch of resistors there. And we all, we're all going to see examples of that in this lecture, right? And in the next lectures, it doesn't matter what do I connect to the collector side, you will find the gain without even needing to actually do redo the analysis, okay? We'll see more about that. So the second part is saying that what is the VBE if IS is 10 to a negative 16 or 0.1 femtoamps? So um, I know that VBE the B DC value of base emitter voltage is VT ln of IC over IS. So it's going to be 25 millivolts times ln of 10 to negative 3, 1 milliamp, 10 to negative 16. So ln of 10 to the positive 13 is somewhere around 30, 29.9 or something. If you use your calculator, that's what I did. And 25 times 30 is going to give you um, somewhere around 775. Or sorry, 750. 25 times 3 is 75, and then you have a zero there. So you have a, a VBE of 750 millivolts, which makes sense. We generally like our VBE to be around, bit, around between 0.7 and 0.8. This is 0.75, so perfect. 
Now it says plot the input and output waveforms, meaning versus time. So the, this should be versus time. Okay, so if I want to do that, I know that my input is going to be looking something like this. So if this is time, my input has a DC of 750 millivolts, or 0.75. So this is my V in, meaning that AC plus DC. And it's going to have some sinusoidal form. What's the amplitude of this? Well, it's not given in the circuit, so we don't know, right? Uh, but it's most likely very small, like one millivolts or something. Um, let's say that, let's call that peak to peak value um, one millivolts, okay? So V in is one millivolt and it's given. Okay. Now, how about V out? I know that V out, based on my gain analysis, is going to be 40 times larger than V in. So, and I'm talking about the swing at the V out. I'm talking about the AC part of V out, right? So I'm going to have 40 millivolts ups and downs, like the peak to peak value of that sinusoid that the V out is going to be 40 millivolts. But then what about the DC? What's the level here? The first thing and the most important thing and probably one of the most common mistakes that you guys do is that you try to somehow relate it to this 0.75 thinking that, well, the gain is 40, so 40 times 0.75 or 40 divided 0.75 divided by 40 or plus 40 or minus 40. Don't try doing something like that. Try for calculating the DC value of your V out, look at the circuit again. This was our circuit and this is our V out. Okay, so I know that the DC of my V out is going to be VCC minus RC IC. It's a DC kind of analysis. So we have a 1.8 minus one kilo ohm times one milliamp, and you get, well, one volt. So 1.8 minus one, 0.8 volts. So you see that it has nothing to do with that 0.75 or the gain of 40, just some random value 0.8 that could have been 0.5, could have been 0.6, or could have been any other number for that matter, as long as it's not too small to take our transistor to saturation, or it's not too large to be greater than VCC, any number could be there, right? Depending on, you can see it, what it depends on, right? None of these values is really related to gain or anything, right? Now, I know that my gain is actually negative, and I know that this the swings are gonna be 40 times bigger, so I'm gonna have something like this. Of course, my drawing is not good, but what I'm trying to say is that whenever you have a peak here, you have a trough there. And whenever you have a peak trough there, you have a peak here, okay? And then this is 40 millivolts. Um, the next part of the question is asking us, how can we double the gain? Well, we kind of discussed that in the last slide. We know that the gain is GMRC or ICRCVT. So if I want to double the gain, I have to double the value of RC or double the value of current. Of course, it comes at the consequence, which is power consumption or signal swing. And uh, we're not going to discuss that again here. But, well, we know how to double the gain and we know that it's going to have some consequences. It's not going to come for free. The last part is what will happen if we consider the early effect? Well, if we do consider the early effect, I know that I'm going to have an R naught here between the collector and the emitter. Okay, and then let's say that the question actually gave us the early voltage. Um, let's say early voltage is 10 volts. Okay, so again, given VA is equal to 10 volts. Now, what would be that R0? R0 would be VA divided by IC. VA being 10 volts, IC being 1 milliamp, I'm going to have 10 kilo. So this is really 10 kilo. Now, one thing I notice is that I'm pretty lucky that my emitter is actually connected to ground. So I could actually erase this and say, well, this is connected to ground here. 
I don't have to actually draw it the way I did. Okay. Later on, we'll see the cases that I'm not lucky, meaning that there is a resistor in the emitter, so the emitter terminal, which is here, cannot be called ground. Okay. But for now, we're lucky, so let's actually take advantage of it. So now, what would be the gain expression when I have this R0? You can, if you go back to how we did the calculation for the gain expression, you remember that I started with V out is equal to RC times this current that is that was negative GMV pi. Well, now instead of RC, I have RC in parallel with R0, right? So my gain expression is going to be V out over V in. Instead of negative GM times V pi, it's going to be, sorry, ne negative GM times RC. It's going to be negative GM times RC in parallel with R0. Okay? And that's it. I didn't have to really do, redo all the analysis or like write KCLs and KVLs anymore because everything is, else is the same. And all, all I can see is that, well, I can combine these two resistors and the result is going to be just a resistor. It's not the value of that resistor is not going to be RC. It's going to be RC in parallel with R0. But then I'm back to the original circuit and I know the gain of the original circuit. All I need to do is to replace RC with RC in parallel with R0. So if I do the math, I'm going to have, well, GM was 1 milliamp over 25 millivolts. There's a negative here. And then RC was 1 kilo ohm and R0 was 10 kilo ohm. Okay, so immediately looking at this, I know that, well, since I replaced 1K with 1K in parallel with 10K, I know that this combination is going to be slightly smaller than 10. To be exact, it's going to be 10 divided by 10 plus 1, 11, right? So my gain is going to be reduced by a factor of 10 over 11. So it's going to be basically 1 over 25 is going to be 40 milli. So... Um, Let's just keep this as 1 over 25. So negative 1 over 25 times 10 over 11. So this is going to be negative 10 over... Um, sorry, this is kilo and that's milli, so they cancel out. That's why I was a little bit confused. So you get a 1,000 here. So you get 40, negative 40, negative 400 divided by 11. So looking at this, you can see that, well, if, if instead of 11, I had 10, this would have been negative 40 that I had before. Now it's 11, so it's going to be a little bit smaller than that, perhaps somewhere around 35, okay? But the point here is that with early effect, well, the transistor is not that ideal current source that I had before. Nothing is as good as before, and you can see that, well, it affects the gain slightly as well, right? With the early effect, my gain was reduced by a little bit, okay? I hope uh, this made some sense.